During 2024, the RAAF will take delivery of a new platform and capability that will transform the Australian Defence Force's ability to hold an adversary at risk at a worthwhile distance. The ADF has lacked both long-range weapons and the means to identify and then designate targets for them. In 2022 and 2023, the Australian Government announced it would acquire new standoff weapons to strike ships and land targets at long range. It is also acquiring a planned 7 MQ-4C Triton Unmanned Air Vehicles, or UAVs, under Project Air 7000 Phase 1 to detect targets for those weapons at long range, identify them, designate them, and then conduct post-strike reconnaissance. With a radar horizon of more than 500 kilometres, Triton will be able to identify threats and designate specific targets for ship, air or ground-launched weapons by geolocating them, sharing their location coordinates with a long-range missile and updating at least some of them in mid-course before the weapon's own sensors and seeker heads take over in the terminal stages of an attack. The MQ-4C Triton is a high-altitude, long-endurance UAV with a mission endurance of up to 30 hours, a maximum altitude of more than 55,000 feet, and, according to manufacturer Northrop Grumman, the ability to survey up to 4 million nautical miles of sea, or littoral, in 24 hours. Its value isn't that it can do the surface search and over-the-horizon targeting functions of a land-based Boeing P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft, or shipborne Sikorsky MH-60R Seahawk helicopter. The value of the Triton is that a force of three of them can conduct an Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance, or ISR, mission over a massive sea area continuously for days or weeks at a time. The Poseidon and Seahawk are limited in both time and operating area. They need to return to base or mothership after a few hours to refuel and change crews. They might also get retasked as they are submarine hunters as well as surface search specialists. And submarines are another emerging threat facing the ADF. Until the arrival of the Triton, the ADF has lacked the ability to build situational awareness and to target weapons across more than a small area at a time. The unarmed Triton is intended to cover that situational awareness and targeting blind spot, and is a cooperative development between Defence and the US Navy. The first RAAF Triton made its maiden flight last November and is scheduled for delivery to Australia in mid-2024. It is the first ever RAAF frontline aircraft that will have contract on maintenance. Northrop Grumman Australia was awarded a four-year interim sustainment support contract of undisclosed value in mid-2023 to conduct maintenance, engineering and supply support services at both Tyndall in the Northern Territory and Edinburgh in South Australia. The RAAF's plans to acquire the remaining three UAVs will probably depend on decisions that will be announced with the National Defence Strategy and a revision of Defence's Integrated Investment Programme this year. Triton's five-person crew makes up the Mission Control Station. Four Tritons, two Mission Control Stations and two Mission System Trainers make up what the RAAF terms an Unmanned Aerial System, or UAS. The RAAF's intent is to eventually operate two Unmanned Aerial Systems. The RAAF has reformed No. 9 Squadron to operate its Tritons, while the aircraft themselves will operate out of RAAF Base Tyndall, the unmanned aerial system will be based at RAAF Base Edinburgh, where there is established secure data handling infrastructure and the planned 14 P-8A Poseidons will be based. Triton's endurance means the RAAF can survey a defined sea area or littoral on a 24-7 basis. One aircraft will be on station with another flying out to relieve it as it gets to the end of its shift. A third aircraft will be preparing for the shift after next, while the fourth could be in deep maintenance or just kept as a spare. At longer ranges, 
a single Triton could mount a 10-hour orbit of the Southern Ocean, south of Heard Island, or over the Pacific east of Fiji, from a base in mainland Australia. Triton is designed to descend fairly frequently to lower altitudes, so it can use its electro-optic sensor to take a closer look at suspect surface vessels or structures. It will then climb rapidly back to its patrol height, where it relies more on the 360-degree coverage of its radar. Triton is expected to gather as much as two terabytes of data on every mission that will be analysed back at Edinburgh by aircrew and intelligence specialists. It will also be shared, in real time if necessary, with other services and agencies and even other nations so that the ADF's sensors, shooters and commanders operate on an all-informed basis. Australia has a 34,000 kilometre coastline and its area of direct interest is its exclusive economic zone of some 10 million square kilometres. Australia also has search and rescue responsibility for about 10% of the Earth's oceans. Australia's area of maritime interest, however, extends beyond that. Any threat to Australia and its interests must come from or through the archipelagos to the country's north or from even further afield, the Red Sea, for example, or the Korean Peninsula. Australia's defence begins with a detailed understanding of who is at sea or in the air in its area of interest. That is a little understood aspect of the RAAF's work, which has traditionally relied on manned aircraft such as AP-3C Orion Maritime Patrol Aircraft or E-7A Wedgetails to build up this detailed surveillance picture. Arguably, satellites could do the same thing as a Triton Surveillance satellites would be well outside missile engagement range and their radar horizons and so their field of view would be enormous. But satellites have some inherent weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Firstly, their orbits are well known and so they are vulnerable to attack. Secondly, simply destroying several satellites in low Earth orbit, about 400 kilometres up, could create an impenetrable cloud of debris, the so-called Kessler syndrome which would make that orbital band useless to everybody for observation, obscure the field of view from higher orbits and make it difficult or impossible to launch replacement satellites. Furthermore, satellites would still lack a maritime patrol aircraft's ability to check suspect ships and other structures from close range and below the cloud base, meaning some other agency and platform would still need to do that. Finally, Unless you have a significant constellation of surveillance satellites to maintain unbroken coverage of a specific area or target, a satellite's orbital period is about 100 minutes or so, meaning the satellite would be over a specific area of interest for a few minutes at a time, about once every five days. That's no good for either monitoring or targeting purposes. Instead, a Triton could act as a pseudo-light, a high-altitude sensor platform that's capable of persistent intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, targeting and communications relay. So the MQ-4C Triton actually makes good sense. In RAAF service, it aims to help build up and maintain a more detailed picture of exactly what's out there than the ADF has previously been able to create. And as the ADF starts to field a new generation of long-range strike and anti-ship missiles, it will be a strike asset as well as a intelligence, surveillance and Reconnaissance 1. For the first time in its history, the ADF will be able to see and then strike with discrimination at extended range. <laughs>